Hi, I'm Sophia Gattuso, founder of Grumbletum, an informative app, website and social media, which I'll be going through with you today. To begin my project, I started with content planning. Planning the content was more important than starting the design, as this was the main focus of this project. The aim of the project was to make the key information about IBS less overwhelming and more friendly. Therefore, I spent more time collating and writing the copy than the design. Although deciding on my layout and colour palette was important, planning the structure of the site was my priority. Creating the sitemap was the first step to working out the structure and navigation, which kept me on track when researching the information that needed to be included in the project. The content planning pages were organised in sections, with the green boxed headings being the main pages and lighter grey headings being the subpages of the site. The sitemap helped me to plan the app prototype as it allowed me to keep track of the increasing amount of screens. In the initial app prototype, there were less screens and internal links because this hadn't been planned as thoroughly, which ultimately led me to focus on the content planning aspect. This helped improve the app and website by gaining a clear focus, which helped me to prioritise the most important pieces of information about IBS. I created a mind map to collate resources and products that I thought would help individuals with IBS on a daily basis. This included apps such as Headspace for meditation, Fabulous for self-care and the Monash University Low FODMAP guide. Websites such as Otter for flexible working opportunities and the toilet map to help locate the nearest loos. Products such as the IBS Network Can't Wait cards for priority access to public toilets and Hotties heat patches to relieve discomfort. The original colour palette consisted of a variety of pastel and lightly toned colours, however in practice these colours were not as vibrant and too varied for a consistent design. Therefore I reduced the amount of colours to only include green and blue, as I believed these would complement each other and give off a calming effect which didn't compromise on professionalism. When testing these colours as background colours on an online contrast checker, I discovered these colours were not accessible for users with visual impairments. This was due to the low level of contrast between the text and background colour. Therefore, I selected colours in the same colour range, but were more vibrant, but were slightly darker, to increase the contrast, making the project more accessible. Using the content I had planned, I was able to finalise my copy and create a layout without focusing on the design elements. This was helpful for me because I was able to prioritise the content in a low fidelity wireframe to act as the blueprints for my mocked up web pages. I then played around with my colour scheme, layout and website assets to see what worked well before mocking up each page. Initially I included a case studies web page, but the functionality of this page was later replaced by social media. Here I took the layout I'd created for my wireframes using the design ideas when drafting my homepage mockup and created a series of mockups in order to prototype the website. In my mockups I created a consistent layout and colour theme which was consistent on each page. I included the website assets that I had illustrated on Adobe Illustrator to further visualise the look and feel of the website. Once I was happy with my mockups, I prototyped how each page would link to each other using Sketch. Here I discovered it would be best to use anchor links on the home page to navigate to a specific section on each page. Using the home page as a hub worked well as this meant the user could navigate to the specific sections they needed information on. Prototyping my website helped me realise this and was the closest reference to how the final site would look. While I was designing the website, I decided it would be a good idea to have an Instagram support group for users to share their IBS stories. Shared experiences would help to create a community and help me reach my target audience. I created numerous posts promoting my brand and sharing IBS information in a simple, light-hearted way. This included posts about the Bristol stool chart, wheat and pineapples. Once I'd created a following of around 150 followers, I began to approach other IBS accounts and low FODMAP dietitians to share their experiences dealing with IBS. I began to share their stories on my Instagram page, which helped me gain more of an audience and helped spread awareness. Today, I have shared 16 IBS stories and my platform begins to grow every day. The social media page has taken a lot of time due to sometimes slow communication with others, as well as a slow increase in followers. I learned that to be successful on social media, you need to upload content often and ensure that the relevant people are paying attention to your posts. Although this has taken a significant amount of time to perfect, 
this side of the project has definitely been the most rewarding. Once I completed my promo video, I used it as paid promotion on Instagram to gain insight on my audience and potentially increase impressions on my posts and profile visits. I started with a small promotion over six days to see whether this brought more engagement to my account. Using this technique as well as following accounts with interest in IBS has increased my follow account significantly and over time will grow, creating more interactions with others in the community. Working from the initial prototype that I'd created for my previous assignment, I played around with the layout of the circular buttons on the menu screen. This included changing the colours initially used as they now didn't fit with the new colour scheme. Instead of circles, I tried a more rectangular design, as I'd seen with other applications. I experimented with the amount of copy and size of these buttons, but opted for a more simplistic approach. I added an overlay which was used prior to the main menu screen for users to land on when they first opened the app. I created alternative versions of this overlay using a cloud to display an opening message to the user. This included the clouds entering the screen from different sides. Instead of having an interesting entrance animation, I decided to have the cloud exit by moving up and covering the screen. This worked well, but took a lot of time to perfect due to the intricacies of Anima. The rest of my screens included a fixed navigation bar with a hamburger menu that opened out and allowed access to the main information points. This navigation bar was kept consistent on each screen by making it a symbol in Sketch, allowing any changes to the symbol simultaneously changing on each screen. Each screen mimicked the website, making it consistent across all platforms. The recipes and IBS story screens were widgets that linked to Instagram, which was beneficial as it continued the user flow to the Instagram account. Using external links to already existing information reduced the length of the screen and made the app more streamlined and less busy. Using entrance animations on each page made the content more interactive and gave the app more personality than statically providing information. I prototyped this app using Anima as I believed it had the functionality to convert my designs into code, read by app development software such as Xcode. However, after further investigation, this functionality was no longer supported and instead I could only export my app prototype into HTML and CSS code or React.js code. Although this is unfortunate, having this code means I can hand this to a developer to program into an app without sacrificing my design. I will now briefly talk about the development of the website. Using a local server called MAMP, I was able to preview the website in real time and make amendments immediately. This aided development as I was able to troubleshoot problems quickly and as they happened. Using a bootstrap template gave me a head start in making the website responsive for mobile, tablet and desktop. Although this was helpful, I did need to make more complex changes for the website to look as I wanted it to. This included completely changing the navigation bar to mimic my mock-up. Initially, this was very different to my plan and only supported two page links. I coded this from scratch with the help of online resources to achieve the desired result. Other significant changes included the color scheme, buttons and footer. At times, I needed to completely change sections of the bootstrap template to fit my needs and page design. I learnt more about bootstrap classes and how to use them appropriately to adjust margins and padding. I added some animations with the help of online resources to make the website more interesting, especially when hovering over buttons, giving it a creative spark. Using the embedded social widget which I customised to fit my colour scheme helped me to showcase users' IBS stories in a striking way. Having the mockups helped me stay on track when developing the site and significantly improved my workflow. As I had already planned the content and illustrated the website assets, developing the website was a streamlined process. After I finished the final website and app prototype, I branded my YouTube channel where I uploaded this content with dedicated thumbnails. Instead of having the most recently uploaded videos on the homepage of my channel, I decided to create a playlist that gave me more control over the video order. This allowed me to place the videos I wanted to showcase as the first videos a potential subscriber would see. Having this playlist allowed me to add the initial technical prototype video that was uploaded on my university YouTube account as this was part of the overall project. Once I completed my promo video, I uploaded and showcased this prominently on my channel. To advertise my website, app and social media account, I created a promotional video in After Effects using my illustrative style. This was difficult as I've had very little experience with this software, but managed to create a result I was proud of in showcasing my project. Using simple transitions and changing the positioning and opacity between scenes, I was able to effectively create a video that had animated movement.
This project has developed my already existing skills in web development, but has taught me new skills in user experience design, animation and social media marketing. I enjoyed this project as I know this will benefit those recently diagnosed with irritable bowel syndrome by helping them feel less overwhelmed.